Okay, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to day four of this Advanced Steel Lunch and Learn Week. Uh, today we're going to be looking at bills of materials. Um, so as with every other day, could someone please confirm that you can see me okay and that you can hear me okay? Thank you, Ilias. Okay, perfect. Then we will uh, crack on as always. We'll do, it goes a little bit over, it's about 18 minutes. Um, and then I'll take questions at the end if anyone has any question on bills of materials. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at bills of materials. So bills of materials these days will run from the BOM templates palette. Now if we have nothing selected and I click say the loading list, we'll look at what we can do with the loading list, that's going to run the loading list for everything that the system finds in the model with a number on it. It's probably going to pop up on my other screen. So here we go, we've got the loading list for everything. Now you will notice that the loading list, if we've got phasing in our model, the loading list will break things down into lots and phases. Now, what if we want just a loading list just for phase one? How would we go uh, about doing it? So there are a couple of things that we can do. We could manually just select the items. And if we manually select items and then push the button UK loading list, it would only run it for what we have uh, selected. Uh, one little tip, when you're doing the UK material list, if you select those items, it does do it based on the whole assembly. So even though we've just got those selected, it would then pick up things like the base plates and things like that. What I've done in here, in this model, is I have added a lot on a phase. So phase one is my main structure. Phase two is my little platform here. Now, what we can do is a few ways we could select things from different phases. We could use the model browser. Went a bit quick there, so let's just click the little drop down and I go model browser. Now you'll see that I have lot on phase in here. Now most of the time that's probably not going to show. I've got it showing because I have added these columns in. So I know it's not necessarily bomb tips and tricks, but if we want to see extra columns, we right click in here, insert column, naming, lot phase. I can then search by lot phase and I could say, right, select everything in phase one. And there's everything in phase one. Then with those selected, I could run my bomb. The other thing we can do, we looked at this on Monday in the template files, is we can save searches into our model. So I'm not going to go back over that, but in here I have a search saved for phase one. So that search, if I go into the properties, is looking for the advanced deal objects with the lot phase of pH1. So if I just tick that, I now can run a loading list and that brings me my loading list just for phase one. There is another way of creating lists, I suppose it would be Probably what we would say is the older way of running lists. Um, I'm just going to set my UCS to world. So we could use the palette. 
So if you have nothing selected, it will do the whole model. If you have certain things selected, it will do what you have selected. The other way we could do it is by using this create lists button. And then we can choose, we get a dialog. We can control what the system is using here. So this is using model objects and it's based on the assembly. So you would have to go and choose your main parts. Now I could in here create one and I could call this, calling it phase, so we'll call it phase one. And what I can do is I could say, right, the selection is the whole model, but then use one of my queries, because I have a query saved, I can say only find phase one. Now this way, doing it this way, you then have to go into the Bill of Materials editor, the BOM editor, and choose which list we want to run. So there's a few more steps, but you can start to filter things. So I can use the loading list. And that's done the same thing in there, phase one. Now the benefit of doing it that way is because I hit the apply button, in my create lists that has now saved that's only saved here for this model but that is now uh, saved in there so there's a couple of different ways of actually creating the lists so i we always these days teach the palette um, So that's how we can create lists. Let's look at how we can actually start to, um, so that's how we can create lists for different areas of the model. So I have phase two in here as well. So I could just run a list just for phase two. How do we actually go and edit, say the order of the lists? If we did that phase one again, just as an example, and I brought that loading list back up. You'll see in here that we've got B1, B2, then R1, then C1, then R2, then C2, C5, C6, C7. So they're not in any sort of logical order. I would like them in um, alphabetical order. We might want it based on the highest weight. So how do we go and actually edit these lists? Um, and what can we do with these lists? So to edit the lists, we go to the output tab. And there is a little button here in the document manager panel called bomb editor. Keeps opening up on my other screen. Now this bomb editor, the first time you guys open it, you'll see this. Top right hand side, we've got three folders advanced templates, user templates, or project templates. So project templates are project specific. We then have advanced templates. And we have user templates. So the way the system works, um, as we talked about yesterday with the uh, drawings, if you imagine there's a filing cabinet for bills of materials. Now the advanced template is what you get out of the box. But what Autodesk have done is they have locked that filing cabinet. So we can't go in and edit the filing cabinet. But they have copied the filing cabinet and left it unlocked. So that's user templates. So when we're modifying templates, we need to go to the user template. And then you'll see that we have BOM. And then within there, we've got parts lists and structured lists. So these are the tabs on my tool palette. 
if we then go to structured lists or I'm going to go to structured lists and I've got UK loading list. Now, if you're not confident with what you're doing in here, my advice would always be what we tell people is if you're messing about with things in advanced deal, take a copy of it before you start messing about. Because if you break it, we're probably going to have to look at reinstalling to get certain things back. So I would just copy that and I would just call it copy of. And at least then we've got something to go back to if we need to. So I'm going to go to the UK loading list. And this is broken down into different areas in here. So we've got report header. So that is only shows on the top of the first page. We have report footer. That only shows on the bottom of the last page. We've got page header, which would show on the top of every page. We've got a page footer, which would show on the bottom of every page. And then we've got our different groups. So for our loading list, I'm looking at group header two. What you do to change the sorting is you right click in a blank space and you've got a cat you've got a button here that says sorting. So you can see this list isn't actually being sorted by anything at the moment. So I'm going to say sort this list based on the main part mark. And that's all I'm going to do. We're going to close that list down. And do I want to save UK loading list? Yes, I do. Now to run that list. What we need to do, you'll see here, I've got a Union Jack flag. Now, if you're uh, joining from America or Australia, you'll obviously see an American flag or an Australian flag or different countries. You will see different flags in there. That flag is the locked part of the system. That is using the bills and materials from the locked filing cabinet. To use the unlocked filing cabinet, the one I've just modified, we click on the flag. And that changes to a little symbol here, the user symbol. I can then go to my structured lists and I can run my UK loading list. I've done it for the whole model because I didn't select anything. Even though I've got this phase isolated here, I didn't have anything selected. So that is still going to do it for the whole model. But what that will do now is you can see I've got B1, B2, C1, 2, 5, 6, 7, and then the R. So this is now sorted alphabetically. So little things like that can make our bills and materials um, a lot more manageable. How do we edit the actual tokens and how these bills of materials works? We don't have a huge amount of time. We've only got a few minutes left. Um, so I'm just going to give you a real um, quick rundown. We'll open up my form editor. Eventually. So what we have is we do have some just text boxes in here. And you can see that we've got labels, tech boxes, check boxes, different shapes, pictures we can put in there, all sorts of things we can put in here. Anytime you see an underscore, this is a token that you can uh, pull out from the model. So if I right click on one of these and choose field content, these are all the fields that we could use in any bill of material. So that is pulling out the main part mark number. You've got loads of fields in here, so you can build custom lists. I will reiterate what we talked about, though, a minute ago. If you're going to completely overhaul a list, take a copy of it and either work in the copy or keep the copy as the original. I'm going to rename this as Lunch and Learn. 
loading list. Now, if you guys have, you know, when I was a draftsman, we pretty much on every project ran the same five schedules from here, same five lists. But you don't want to constantly be scrolling up and down looking for the list that you're actually going to generate. If you only ever want to run five lists, we can customize what shows in this palette here. So I go back into the Bill of Materials editor. This is the last thing we'll look at today. Try and keep it on time for once. I go back into the Bill of Material editor. Now you can do this for either the advanced or the user templates. You can't edit the advanced one, but you can filter the list out. Rather than clicking on the list, if I click on the folder here, you'll see all of these tick boxes. So if I untick the ones that I don't want to see, I'll keep the lunch and learn loading list in there. Uh, I want UK bottom anchor list, bolt erection list two, cold world list, loading list, material list, and I didn't want to saw list. So I've only got four or five in there. Click OK. Now this is the thing you have to do. Turning the palette on and off won't change anything. What you need to do, you need to close the palette down, and then we need to shut our advanced deal down completely. So I'm going to save that. The palette has to be closed down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut my advanced deal down. But if a palette isn't closed, this won't work. So you do have to make sure that you've actually closed the palette. And then I'm going to reboot my uh, advanced deal. Okay, so I did, uh, it didn't boot up that quickly. Um, I did pause the recording there. I didn't want to wait for that to load up. So you can see the palette is closed. So we'll just wait for this to kick itself into life. If I open up the bomb templates palette now, we'll dock it back in. If I go to the user section and I go to my structured lists, now we only have the list that I want to run on a daily basis. We can still go back and use the create list to go back into the bomb editor um, and run them that way if there's a sort of one off for a project, but that is how we can customize what we see in here rather than having to scroll up and down. So if we go back to the advanced section, that's what you get out of the box. User, that's what I've customized it to. And you can customize the advanced one just to show what you want. You just can't customize anything within the lists. And I have run over again, uh, but that is all, that's all we've got time for today. Hopefully I'm back. I think on my internet kicked out there. Hopefully you guys can hear me and see me still. Uh, luckily it kicked out when it had all finished. It is being recorded. It will go into our content portal next week. Um, so if anyone did miss anything, it will go up to our content portal. Uh, I'll just put those links in the chat for anyone who wants them. Uh, but I'll keep the session running for a few more minutes. Um, if anyone does have any questions for me about bills and materials. Uh, Dave, thanks, thanks for your comments. It's breakfast in America. So yeah, breakfast and learn for you guys. I think in Australia it's evening time. Um, I know we've had a few Australians in this week. Uh, so lunch and learn in the UK and Europe, but just accordingly elsewhere around the world. Okay, well, there aren't any 
questions that have come through. So thank you very much for your time today. Hopefully everyone can join me for the last session tomorrow where we're going to be looking at the manage management tools and what we can do within the management tools.